From the prophet Isaiah, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. In the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to Old Stone Presbyterian Church. Welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday in the season of Advent, December 6th, 2020. It is good that we are together. Our worship leadership today is the youth of Old Stone Presbyterian Church, led by Amy Kesterson and so many volunteers and families. We are grateful for their leadership and for the chance to worship with them together today. I hope that you'll follow along using the bulletin that is on our website. And I also hope that you're keeping up to date with the goings on of life here at Old Stone Presbyterian. Our newsletter, Pebbles from Old Stone, is available on the website. It's also available by email, or we can put it in the Postal Service mail to you if that is more convenient. This past Sunday, we had a drive through Advent Craft Fair. Um, thank you for all those who helped and make it wonderful and a success. We do have some extra copies of the devotional that was handed out and then mailed out this week to all of Old Stone. If you'd like some extra copies or you didn't get one and you'd like one, just call the church office and we'll make sure one gets to you. Also, we have an outdoor Christmas tree and it's our task to decorate it. At the Advent Craft Fair, we handed out these ornaments, pieces of wood, and we invite you to write on them with your prayers, your hopes, your faith, whatever is in your heart. If you didn't get any of these ornaments and you'd like to be a part of this project, just call the church office and we'll get some ornaments to you. We also anticipate having them out during the day in a plastic bin with some permanent markers. So if you wanna come by, you can just come by, make an ornament, hang it on the tree. We look forward to seeing how it gets decorated. Friends, with all of this, with all of you, with all that we are, let us worship God. Good news, unspeakable joy. A great light has burst forth, overcoming the darkness. A child is born for us, a son has been given. Bringing a kingdom of endless peace, we shall call him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Come, come let us see what God has brought us. Let us see what the Lord has done. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and goodwill to all. Today we relight the candle of hope and we light the candle of peace.
without peace we have no solace, no fulfillment. As we continue the season of Advent, we wait in hopeful anticipation of the peace the Christ child will bring to our weary world. We seek to live as people of peace, working toward a world free of violence and vengeance, where all can live free or of abuse and fear. We light this candle to symbolize the peace of Christ's presence. We gather to share his, this peace with one another. has found us, war has left us, nevermore should we abuse or and still to solve our conflicts. Peace should be our only muse. God made flesh will come among us. God of hope, God of peace, you speak peace into the world through the way of the Christ child. Help us live as peacemakers that we may be called children of God. God of promise, God of peace, into our darkness come. Amen. Amen. Children of God, today we are celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. If you would like to participate, you simply need to be ready with something to eat and something to drink. Old Stone Presbyterian Church does have a good number of these pre-filled communion cups available. They have some bread, they have some juice, we even have them in gluten-free varieties. If you would like to use these, you simply need to let us know and we will make sure that you have them available to pick up. But if you don't have one of these, that's okay. You simply need to have something to eat, something to drink, and an open heart. The story is told that during World War II in Britain, in London, as the city was being bombed, that many children were evacuated, but not all. Some were left in the city, some were adopted, and some became orphans. 
after a time, some of these orphans were taken in by a group of Jesuits. They cared for them, they fed them, but they found that the children could not go to sleep at night. Night after night, this went on until one of the brothers realized that the problem was is the children were anxious. They didn't know if they would be fed in the next day. And so that night, knowing that a difficult night was ahead, they gave each child a small piece of bread to sleep with and said to them something like this, hold on to your piece of bread while you are sleeping. Remember that you woke up safe this morning. We fed you, we took care of you. When you wake up tomorrow, we will be here for you. You will be fed, you will be cared for. Let this bread remind you of this. Good night, children. That night, with their pieces of bread, the children slept. So friends, come, be comforted in the story of Bethlehem. Bethlehem, which translates into the house of bread. Come and be comforted in this story, in this house of bread. Come to be comforted by a table that holds bread and a cup of love that will stay with you always. We remember God's promises of Emmanuel and a branch of Jesse's root. Leader, wisdom, monarch, key of all that is locked and dawn of every morning. And we remember the sacred story that happened in the house of bread for a new mother and a fostering father, sheep and shepherds, a few wise travelers with gifts, and many, many angels. And we remember that the baby named Jesus grew up to heal people and touch them with strange parables that sometimes made people angry. At Passover, he broke unleavened bread and poured wine and love freely that all may live in peace and be comforted and be led in peace and also hope and joy and love with all the world. So let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us in our lonely nights under our guiding stars with the hopes and fears of all our years, we come for comfort, for peace of mind and peace on earth, for a blessing on our hands and the bread in them, on our lips and the cup we will lift to it. May this bread and this cup be your holy life that we may ponder in our hearts and pray in our communities, just as we pray together now using the words of Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know on the night on which he gave himself up for us, the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples. He took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them to eat, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So now as we prepare to partake of the bread and the cup, we remember that the Holy Child descends to us and is born to us in these days. So let us share the bread of life. And when we remember the Christmas angels and the great glad tidings they tell, we drink the cup, we drink deeply 
and know that Christ abides with us. Let us share the cup of salvation. And let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have come to us in the child of Bethlehem, the house of bread, in this bread and this cup, and in your answer to all of our hopes, your offer of peace, deeper than any truce, truer than the upheaval that surrounds us. You have comforted us with your promise and your presence that we too may spread the welcome wings of your good tidings. We ask it in your name. Amen. My name is Joseph, and I am a carpenter by trade. My wife Mary and I are not so different from you folks, although I think sometimes you believe that we are. We certainly have experienced some incredible events in our journey through this life with our Heavenly Father. And our relationship has, of course, had some turbulent times. But through it all, God has taught us so much about our love for each other, his love for us, and our love for him. This journey begun with a prearranged marriage. We had a beautiful betrothal ceremony. Our parents certainly picked well for me. Mary was always been wise, devout, and beautiful. Even then, I found her faith comforting, and I knew I was blessed with a wife of such notable character. A few months on, I guess I should have known that something was wrong when she left town without warning. And then upon her return, I had received the news that broke my heart. I'm pregnant, she said. Pregnant. My head began to spin, my heart pounded, and I tried to grasp the concept. If she and I had not been together, then whom? I was so confused, her silence only added to my confusion, so I left. I walked for what seemed like hours, trying to make sense of it all. Then the stars lent their light to the night sky, but not to my dark heart, as I wrestled with the decisions that I was being forced to make. I felt that I couldn't marry her, not after this, but I knew that the punishment for adultery was stoning, and in spite of everything, I couldn't allow that to happen to Mary. Maybe if she left quietly, she could slip away for a while to avoid public disgrace. I suppose I must have dozed off then, because seemingly from nowhere an angel appeared to me. I'll never forget the words spoken to me that night. The angel called, to, called me by name. Joseph, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what, has, what is conceived in her is the result of a miracle performed by the Holy Spirit. The baby will be a boy when you are to name it Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. When I opened my eyes, suddenly the stars seemed brighter and my heart lighter. I made the decision and I ran back to the house to tell Mary about the angel who just visited me and my decision to marry her. We both knew that people would be that people would talk for a while and assume the worst, but they will understand someday. And then, of course, came the trip to Bethlehem. I was so proud of Mary. The trip was long and difficult. I did my best to find a room for her, but to no avail. Even in the face of our trials, she didn't complain. We were so thankful for the stable, knowing that the baby was well on its way. I would have done anything to make her more comfortable, but when she pulled me gently by the hand to see our new child, all of creation seemed to stand still for a moment. At the moment, the joy of the weight of being chosen to raise God's son wrapped around me. I pledged to do the very best I could. Let us prepare the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the valleys be lifted up. Draw us away from negative thoughts and actions and lift from us sadness and worry. Through humble people, redeem your world. O oh God, let the mountains be leveled.
feel of so much joy in celebrating. We know that the way we live does not always reflect God's intentions. Please bow your head and confess your sins along with me. God of the heavens and of the earth, we come before you today as blessed people who refuse to count our blessings. You teach us that you are the only perfect being, yet we chase perfection for ourselves and expect it from our leaders. We are guilty of not setting aside time for worship, thanksgiving, and repentance. All too often, we give you what is left over in our lives and not what comes first. Please forgive our arrogance and give us the strength to live for your light that shines in the darkness. Amen. The Declaration of Pardon. Hear the good news. God does not keep a record of our sins just to pull it out and use them against us later. Our God is a God of mercy. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Even in difficult times, remember that God has done great things for us. God is with us, therefore we are never alone. That is why we gather together our gifts, our time, our talents, and our treasures to say thank you to God. We believe that God shines brightly through our church, our congregation, our ministry here at Old Stone, and that God will take our offerings and shine brightly through those as well. Let us make a priority of returning to the God what is God's. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Listen to the word of God. In time of Herod the king of Judea, there was, was a priestess named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth, also a descendant of Aaron, both of them righteous in the sight of God, observing all of the Lord's commands and declares blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. They were both very old. Here ends our reading. My name is Elizabeth. Some of you may know me better as Mary's cousin, or even John the Baptist's mother. I heard that you were worshiping at Old Stone today, and I wanted to join in. Whenever I have the chance to praise our God, I take it. For God has blessed me with such joy. 
sometimes when I worship with new congregations, I find that they are showing us they appear to be listening. They are tithing and giving their offerings, but still something is missing. Can you guess what that something is? It's the joy. As a result, I have something that I simply must share with you. It's about the joy. More specifically, it's about my joy. It all started many years ago when my husband, Zechariah, went to serve his term in the temple. After his term, he was long overdue for home. I just couldn't imagine what was taking him so long. When he finally did return, he was speechless. I mean, really speechless. He couldn't talk. Well, he proceeded using sign language to tell me that he had seen an angel at the temple. The angel had told him the craziest thing, that I was going to have a baby. Me, at my age. The angel told Zechariah that we would have a son and we were to name him John. He was told that many would rejoice because of his birth. It was foretold that John would be great in God's eyes, bringing many of the people of Israel back to the Lord. What more could any mother want than a son who would pave the way for the Messiah? I kept this to myself much of the time I was pregnant, but then one day there came an unexpected knock at the door and then there stood Mary. When she spoke her greeting, the baby inside my body leapt at the sound of her voice and I was filled with such joy as I had ever known. I wonder, is this what's missing from our Advent worship? Do you really feel the joy as you enter the Lord's presence? For modern Christians, sometimes celebrating the Lord's birth means shopping here, wrapping there, off to a party tonight, and all that cooking. It's all hustle and bustle. It's no wonder you also so often end up to worship in a tizzy. Let's recapture the joy of just being in God's presence. If a baby inside his mother's womb leapt for joy, then shouldn't we too? Where there is no joy, is there really Jesus? Elizabeth was set up to succeed. She came from a good family and entered into a good marriage as a young woman. She was a devout Jew, unwavering in her faith, and her future was bright. Elizabeth likely had plans for a family. Well, difficult for us to imagine today, in those times, a woman's worth was measured by having children. It's hard to imagine her shame and frustration as one year rolled into another without becoming pregnant. We can imagine that hope was dangerous, and in her old age, she became resigned to the fact that she would never be a mother. But then, it happened. Unbelievably, she found that she would have a child. Elizabeth, a descendant of Aaron, was selected by God to be the mother of the great prophet who would prepare the way before Jesus Christ. Maybe we are a little like Elizabeth at times. We have our own plans and become disappointed when they don't come to fruition. Maybe it's in the moments that feel like failure that we are best prepared for the great things that God has in store for us. It's humbling to acknowledge that we can't see the big picture. We don't know what will happen in the next chapter, but it gives us strength to admit that God does. Elizabeth teaches us just that. Our reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Here ends our reading. It is a good morning. It's good because there's so much hope for all people, those in this church, those in this town, and for all people. I am a shepherd, and my home is in the field. Sheep are my business, my only business. But there was this one starlit night that I will never forget. The, the evening started out pretty normally. I hadn't planned on doing anything except watching my flock and the stars. Suddenly, a light shone all around us and we felt a presence. We turned and there stood an angel. Frankly, it dang near scared us out of our wits. But the calmness in the angel's voice 
quieted our fears as we were told of an incredible event happening over in Bethlehem. It was good news of joy that this angel brought us and it wasn't just for us. It was for everyone. On that day, our Savior had been born. Then the angel told us, Find the baby in a cattle stall, lying in a manger. And then the sky filled with angels, all singing glory to God. After the other, the shepherds and I talked it over. We decided to take a little trip down there and see for ourselves. This thing that had been See, had happened. We'd been waiting for this for a long time, and just as we had been told, we found him, a sweet little baby. Baby who had become our king of kings and lord of lords. We returned to our fields, praising God the whole way. As I watched my sheep and cared for them, I couldn't help but think of how we are often like them. Just like my sheep, each of us has strayed at, at once, one time or another. Sometimes it's something simple, like working too much and not making time to worship. Sometimes it's not, not being faithful in our marriage, or addiction, or cheating to personal gain. There are just so many ways to stray. But how amazing is it to have this Christ, the King, who will always be leading us back to him when we get off the pad. He is truly our hope. What if we chose, starting today, to live like Mary? What would change if we were more ready to say yes to God? It's comfortable and safe for us to hear the familiar story about the events leading up to Jesus' birth. Here in our day and time, more than 2,000 years removed, but it wasn't comfortable or safe for Mary. Here we are, more than 2,000 years removed from the terrifying yes declared by a young girl who fully and completely trusted God. Are we brave enough to follow her example now? What if we chose to follow God absolutely, like Mary? What if? Good morning. Your presence here is a tribute to my son, and I thank you. I'm Mary. Most people know me best as the mother of Jesus, but they sometimes don't think about the fact that I was also a daughter a daughter who was unsure of how my parents would react when they learned of my pregnancy. I also pledged to marry Joseph. I was with child, but he was not the father. The punishment for my presumed indiscretion was death. But as you know, God, God's always in control. I was more than a little surprised when the angel of the Lord greeted me. The angel told me of my value to God and assured me right away that I was not really alone. Once my fears were quieted, I was given the incredible news that I was the mother of the Messiah, me, a poor woman betrothed to a car carpenter. I couldn't imagine how this was going to work. But then the angel told me that nothing is impossible with God. Being a devout Jewish girl, I was, of course, knew this to be true. So I trusted God implicitly. All I could say was, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said, but I am only human. I was afraid. I couldn't imagine how Joseph might take the news. To my relief and my joy, I learned that Joseph had experienced his own angelic visit. We moved our wedding day up and didn't worry about what people thought. We knew that God is in control and from that we drew our peace. Even when we had traveled to Bethlehem, we went together. We knew God would take care of us. Even when all the ends were full, it didn't matter. We were used to humble circumstances. And when Jesus came into this world in the humblest of circumstances, all that mattered to me was that we were to all together. Joseph, my precious baby, and me, a family. The moon filtered its soft light through the cracks in the walls, illuminating our sun, who had come to illuminate the world. It was, it was then that we knew real peace. Peace isn't found in the glitter of lights, the decorations, or in the fabulous holiday foods. Nor is it found the perfect gift under the tree. True peace is found in trusting God. So enjoy the decorations and the glitter of lights, but find your peace in the light of the world.
Loving God, we know that we live in a world that needs your peace and mercy right now. As we joyfully anticipate the coming of your Son, we know that joy does not come easily for all of us. Hear our cries for our healing, as we are broken people living in a broken world. We ask for your loving arms to wrap around children who live in places that are not safe, where they feel unloved, for women and men who know violence all too well. We pray for those facing illnesses that are overwhelming, who are in constant discomfort. We pray for those who feel less than human and for the wisdom to really see them and address their humanity. We ask, for, we ask that you grant special mercy for those facing this season without a loved one, looking for joy but struggling to find it. We pray that your mercy will be known to everyone. In the name of Christ, our Lord, Amen. Be people of peace. Let peace live in your heart and share the peace of Christ with all you meet. Share peace by acting out of compassion and not fear. Share peace by listening to all sides of the story. Share peace by praying for our world in this Advent season. We need to see, feel, and share peace. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share peace with those you meet. Be people of peace. Be still. Wait. Don't fill the silence with business. Watch for the coming. May the peace of Christ be with you.